Hey there, I'm Source Make, and today I'm going to be teaching you about make files. So as usual, I've got my website open, and it's got an article right here that has a bunch of code and examples that teaches about make files, and I'm going to be using it in this video. So if you'd like to view this web page, there'll be a link below this video. Just go ahead and click it, and you can have this page on your screen too. And while you're down there, you can also click the subscribe button for this YouTube channel. So what is a make file? To put it simply, it's just a simple bash script that is traditionally used to compile code for a project. So when people like have their projects in like really simple folders and they don't have like an IDE to handle everything for them or compile for them, what they do is they use the terminal to compile their code and instead of remembering the commands to compile all their files and do all that for them, they just have a make file that simply just handles it for them. And you're going to see what that means when we go through our example, which we'll be doing right now. So I've got my web page on this other monitor of mine and right here we've got an Ubuntu virtual machine running and I've got this folder open and traditionally with projects you have like a docs folder and you've got, it's usually not caps lock, you've got a source folder and most of the time you've got a, uh, let me see right here, touch read me, that's a little weird you've got a readme file that explains everything. That This is the traditional structure of a project and you can see we go inside of our source folder and most of the time you, the source folder has like code, right? So so let's have an example code uh, for, for C++. Let's say touch main.cpp and this is going to create a cpp file and we're going to open it and then we're just going to have the simple hello world program. So let's say our project is starting out. And to start it out, we just want to have using namespace std. We want to have a simple hello world program. And I'll just type this out with you just quickly. We've got return zero, and we want to see out hello world from source make. And let's do an end line and. How would you actually compile this? Well, on Linux, what you would do is you use G++ that's the compiler, and you'd say, okay, G++, our file that we're compiling is main.cpp, and then we want to output that to an executable named run. So I'm going to run this command, and you see this run executable gets generated, and then when we want to run that, we do dot slash, the executable name, and it's a little out of the way, but hello world source make. That's how it works. And you know, most of the time you don't want to have to remember this, especially when like files get like much bigger. Like, let's um, let, let's make the make file first. So so we're gonna do touch make file, and this creates a ma a, a file called make file. It's got no .cpp or any extension, just make file. And we're gonna say all, and we're gonna let's uh, do g++ main.cpp oh run that's to compile it and you know what let's actually just have it run right after it does this so so what this make file is going to do is it's going to say okay we're going to compile this into an executable called run and then we're going to actually run it when this command is done that's how it works so then we say make and it did it it did the compiling and wait, wait actually let me get rid of this so you can see it for real so let's do it one more time it did the compiling and then once this was made it did slash run and then it says hello world so yeah so why would you actually use this well let's make our project a little bit bigger so far it's like really simple right well let's say that we've got like another file here and let's create let's let's touch let's create another folder touch helper.cpp and every time in C++ that you have a helper file like another file you need a header file for that for every cpp file you need a .h file so so in this one let's make this one have a function that says hello world for us so let's say include iostream let's using namespace std and now let's have a function named say hi because you know as, as projects get bigger you can't have everything in just one file right that's just bad organizing so most of the time projects have a bunch of files I know people We've got literally 20 files, and you don't even know what's what, but you still need to have it because of dependency issues. So our um, say hi function is going to be void, and all it's going to do is it's going to hello world 
from source make once again, but this time from another file. And we're going to end the line, create a new line. So I'm going to save that. And now our helper.h is going to say, okay, what function do we have in this file that we need to declare? All we have is void say hi, put a semicolon after that, and let's go back to our main. We're going to reference this new file in here by saying include helper.h. This is going to say, okay, helper.h, where this line is, actually, we're just going to put this code. And this code is just going to say, okay, we've got this function na named say hi, and we're going to want it in this file. So let's let's just declare it so that main knows about it. And we're going to get rid of this hello world, and we're going to say say hi, because we're calling it from the function now. So once again, our new project now has three files in it. Our project grew just like that. We've got helper.cpp, and it's got one function that says hello world. We've got helper.h that declares this function, um, you know, as a standard C++ declaration. And now we've got main.cpp, which instead of saying hi itself, is going to call the function say hi. And now to compile this, what we would need to do is say, we need to do the exact same thing, but this time we need to compile the helper.cpp file, so we do that. And let's call it run2. And now when we do run2, hello world from source make from another file. So, so you get the point here, right? Is our projects get bigger, this line is going to become like huge. And it's not just like for C++, Java, any other compiled language these compile lines get huge and no one wants to memorize it, believe me. So what they do is people make a make file and you let the make file handle everything. So we're gonna go back to our make file now and we're gonna say we're gonna include what is it? Helper.cpp here? Did I? Is that a period? CPP. I'm gonna call it run2 and we're gonna change it like that. And now our make file is updated. Let's do make one more time and make did it for us. It, it compiled it and it ran it for us. So make files are really helpful because traditionally they're used for compiling um, these lines for us, the, our code, but it also has like extra functionality. What's up with this all thing? I've never actually explained this. Well, what all does is it says that handles make just by itself, but you can also give it additional parameters. So so let's do this. Let's um traditionally what my programming master did was he would have make build and that would actually be the one that compiles the program. And then he'd have something called make let, let's uh do something called make run and that's going to do dot slash run two. And for our all let's just have it do some simple bash um, clean, make, build. And I'll explain this in a second. Let's also have a clean that says it's, it's got um, simple, how would you say this, a command line thing. If you type remove run2 in the command line, it actually removes the folder. So we're going to have that in make clean. So this is a new make file. Let's see how this works. Now when we type make, what does it do? Well, it, it calls this echo clean make build because that's what we specify by all. All means that we don't give it any extra parameter, we just type make. And let's do make build. Make build will compile our project for us. It runs this line of code. Make run will run this line of code for us because that's what we told it to do. And make clean will remove that for um that file for us, the executable. So Make files are really good because you don't want to have to remember this and you don't want to have to type out main.cpp, helper.cpp and all the files you need. But also you can give it additional functionality for the project. So in this particular project we want to get rid of this and we want to actually run our executable and we have this build command. But for other projects there might be like extra stuff you want to do. Maybe there's one way you want to run it or, or compile it. Maybe there's one file you don't want to include one time or, or stuff like that. So, so instead of actually remembering how to compile it or how to do things like special ways, you would just have your make file, you'd give it these parameters and the make file would be the one to handle all of this so you don't have to memorize it yourself. And that's basically the point of make files. So, I hope that made sense. Again, 
make files are really useful if you, you have like your code like this in, in a project and this is all you see because you don't want to have to when you look at this project you don't want to have to remember everything when you come back to it later on you just want to say make a and that's it most of the time when I have my projects I don't even have all this all, all I do is I have make um I, I have all actually just like like this so I, I just type make and I'm lazy about it and, and quickly it just works that's what I like to do for my projects so that's how make files work a lot of people use it if you work in the terminal and you're not using like a special IDE like I don't know Eclipse or Visual Studio then this is kind of what you should be doing it's, it's really traditional to be doing it that if you see someone using a make file and working with projects like this this is how you know that they're kind of like a good hacker because they're, they're doing stuff from the command line and they know what's up that's like a good programmer knows how to do this so you have this in your toolkit now you've got this web page so if you want to do it yourself you can go through the example yourself we just did it but this web page also will walk you through it if you want to just read it on your own on your own computer and do it so that's make files I'm source make source make that's where the name comes from in your source file you have this make file and, and that's what compiles your code and you can do special stuff with that so that's make files thanks for watching